Hello, everyone. So, I know you don't see my face on this channel too much, other than my, you know, occasional live streamed uh, podcast or whatnot, or maybe that special I did a couple years ago for Christmas. But uh, I just wanted to, since it's been a long enough time before I've done any like substantial content on this channel, I want to give you guys a quick update about where I'm at. And at the end, I have a cool bonus for you, as well as a release date. Uh, progress is going really well. I've been trying to do some community posts about uh, my progress on Cyberpunk Part 3, as well as just bouncing ideas off of you guys. But Cyberpunk Part 3 is going very well. It's about 60% done through editing. It's uh, scripted, voiced, so we're on the final stretch. That still means many hundreds of hours of work, though. It's going to be tight. There's going to be some sections where I have to basically create the entire content from scratch. If I could only describe how much work I'm putting into this video, I used to basically just drag clips from the internet, uh, from YouTube, like non-edited, just like drop them in there. Now I'm spending hours like finding interesting backgrounds that fit the content and the color scheme of things. I'm taking these clips, extracting quotes from them, and then I'm selectively AI upscaling them um, to better resolutions to be less harsh on the eyes. I'm doing that with photos, I'm doing it with artwork, I'm doing it with covers of media, I'm doing that with all sorts of things. I'm sourcing obscure uh, production photos that I had to look all over the internet to find. I'm trying to get the highest res images and add effects to them, like light leaks and, and circuits and things like that. I'm spending hours and hours and hours and hours finding music that's uh, fitting to each content uh, for each topic and uh, mimic music that sounds a lot like a particular movie or a lot like a particular band that I'm talking about. Um, I will be digging into some cyberpunk inspired music in this section. Um, I did a small teaser uh, a little while ago, but it uh, I used the YouTube shorts uh, feature, which I don't think I'm particularly like. It doesn't seem to fit my content very well. It's too short. It's either square or vertical uh, format and doesn't really do anything for my viewers. So I don't think I'll use that again. I'm making up for that by doing a proper teaser at the end of this video. So part three is really, really uh, different from my other work. It's focused a lot on books. It's focused a lot on some comics. It, it talks about music as a medium for pretty much the first time I've I've have on this channel. So I'm really expanding a lot with this uh, the scope of my channel now. Um, gaming is actually probably the smallest aspect of this of this video. I do talk about a few games. I talk about System Shock, System Shock Two, uh, BioForge, things like that. The biggest uh, things I talk about in this are probably movies and books a bit about comics, music, things like that. So definitely kind of going into like indigo media as opposed to just gaming, which is exciting. Um, I still am a gaming channel, so I still will get back to gaming. And that also brings up another good point is that I will have to uh, pivot to other content after Cyberpunk Part 3. I've now been working on Cyberpunk this series for nearly two years. I've been scripting. Uh, editing, voicing, editing my voiceover, editing the video, doing all sorts of stuff for Cyberpunk for about two years. And, and the last thing I want to do is I want I don't want to burn out on Cyberpunk and make the last episode or two poor. I don't want to end in, in a fizzle. I'd rather kind of rejuvenate myself, you know, get more energy, kind of try out new things. Uh, I've got tons of ideas. I've got, um, did, I recently did a poll with some of the ideas I have. I want to do a retrospective on Quintet which is a, a seldom mentioned, a really, really inspired Japanese developer that, that uh, used to work for Enix before the Square Enix merger. They made games like ActRaiser, uh, Illusion of Gaia, uh, Terranigma, and all sorts of other games, uh, games I didn't even knew about. And they had some other really cool, interesting games in production that uh, never actually got released. Like one game they, they were developing where it literally had a, it was almost like Populous, um, but you could flip the world upside down. So like there was like a, a uh, one plane of existence and another existence you could flip between at each time. And it was super interesting. I also want to talk about, um, at some point, I've been really getting into Miami Vice and, and stuff like that. It's an incredibly influential show. There's so many uh, movies, uh, video games, and almost some I attribute like the kind of synth wave outrun style to that series. It was just very, very influential. It was one of the first TV series to kind of be shot like, like a movie was. You'll notice that it was very cinematic in its presentation many times, so very ahead of its time. And and you can't beat that sort of Miami crime, you know, undercover cop, memorable style, especially with, uh, you know, the synth wave soundtrack and everything like that. It, it just 
was so iconic that you, you can't help but see it everywhere. You see it in Hotline Miami, you see it in games like Vice City, literally named after the show. So, and I'll also dip into the uh, the uh, Michael Mann movie from the mid 2000s. I saw it in theaters. Um, I have some thoughts on it, so I'll dig into that as well. A lot of cool things I, I want to eventually cover Iron Storm. I've had a script created uh, or script started on Iron Storm, um, Deus Ex, you know, uh, Thief, Deadly Shadows, things like that uh, since 2016. <laughs> I want to talk about Silicon Knights at some point, you know, Eternal Darkness, things like that. I don't know if I'll be able to get to all of that, but I will need to take a break from Cyberpunk after part three. After part three. So we'll still have about four and a half hours of cyberpunk documentary. I'll take a break and then we'll come back to it and wrap up the rest. So that's what the plan is right now. Um, so yeah, as far as news for me, I don't get too many, uh, get into too many personal details, but uh, one of the troubles I've had in the past year or two was um, I've had two minor unrelated surgeries. Um, you know, it, it happens, uh, I had to get wisdom teeth removed surgically two hours under general anesthetic uh, that was pretty rough um, recovered from that but I've not quite been the same since similar with um, uh, a kidney issue where I had to get a bunch of things done with my kidney I still have them both you know so I, it's not like I was dragged in the back room and some uh, guy took one of my kidneys no that wasn't that wasn't the case but uh yeah lots of issues and then combined with those issues I never fully recovered from them and then locked down for about a year so that really just kind of hit me pretty hard. I gained a bunch of weight, lack of energy, lack of focus, uh, lack of sleep, pain, sometimes constant. So Lolly's issues really make it difficult to do two plus jobs on top of that. So really working hard to get in better condition. Um, I've lost weight. I have done a bunch of supplements. I've been done some dieting, things like that. It's a slow process, but this is more of a lifestyle change rather than just a quick a quick fix because a quick fix usually doesn't last so i'm trying to really make some long long-term decisions that will affect me will make me more productive make me for more energetic more focused so i can make more content for you guys and combined with kind of doing some short-term videos in between cyberpunk part three and four i think will be a huge benefit to the channel and will make my content schedule look way more exciting <laughs> and you'll get more than one video a year yeah i'm excited about that and also i'm getting married in november so that's fun um a lot of things to prepare for that as well, but I'm balancing it in a way where I can still work on my channel, still work my day job and, and not go completely crazy. So um, that's really exciting though. It's been a long time coming and I'm making it happen. And it's gonna be in person and everybody's gonna be happy. So finally, um, I wanted to, as a bonus for you guys for being so patient with me, I wanted to do a little kind of uh, semi-trailer teaser-esque uh, preview of what I have so far edited for part three. Like I said, I, I have about 76 minutes or so done out of an over two hour video, but uh, here's a quick snippet for you guys and fingers crossed, I'm gonna try to get the final video out by November. So here's a special thank you for being so patient. Enjoy this teaser for Cyberpunk part three, the evolution of Cyberpunk. <laughs> Despite its widespread acclaim in sales, William Gibson's classic novel, Neuromancer, was having trouble making its way to the silver screen. It was stuck in development hell for decades, despite director interest and several pitches. Instead, Gibson's earlier work, Johnny Mnemonic, was adapted in 1995. What started as an indie arthouse project exploded into a $30 million pitch to Sony Pictures, fueled by the boom of computer technology. When Gibson himself wrote the screenplay, he had to adapt the 22-page short story into a feature-length film, essentially inventing 80% of the plot from scratch. Johnny Mnemonic follows the life of a data smuggler who gave up his childhood memories years ago for a head implant. This effectively turned his brain into a portable hard drive for discrete clients. This idea mirrors the real-life sneaker net, where people transport data storage by foot. But unlike the floppy disks or CDs of the 90s, Johnny can carry a whopping 80 gigabytes in his head, over 50 times the capacity of an average hard drive in 1995. Many may think of Gibson as a technophile, but even he admits that was never true. He wrote his early works on a typewriter and gradually switched to the Apple II, then to consumer-friendly MacBooks and iPads. When he modernized Johnny Mnemonic for the big screen, he had to brush up his knowledge of computer technology. 
I was actually able to write Neuromancer because I didn't know anything about computers. I knew literally nothing. What I did was deconstruct the poetics of the language of people who were already working in the field. I'd stand in the hotel bar at the Seattle Science Fiction Convention listening to these guys who were the first computer programmers I ever saw talk about their work. I had no idea what they were talking about, but that was the first time that I ever heard the word interface used as a verb. And I swooned. Wow, that's a verb. Seriously, poetically, that was wonderful. So I was listening to it as an English honors student. I would take it back out, deconstruct it poetically, and build a world from those bricks. The movie updates 1980s technobabble like cyberspace to real-world terms like the internet. Johnny Mnemonic shows off surfing the internet and VR, cybernetically augmented limbs, and the villain even brandishes a monomolecular wire implant, which cuts through flesh, steel, and stone like a deadly laser whip. Actor Keanu Reeves portrays the titular character in his first of many roles in cyberpunk movies and games. A routine data running job hits a snag when Johnny's frantic and inexperienced clients ask him to download a massive 320 gigabyte package, far beyond the maximum he can safely store in his implant. Exceeding this limit will eventually kill him if not extracted quickly. Johnny reluctantly agrees right before his clients are brutally assassinated by the Yakuza. Going from bad to worse, what follows is a high tension chase as cutthroat corporations, the relentless Yakuza, street gangs, and artificial intelligence, and even a cyborg preacher assassin all want the secrets contained in Johnny's head. Slowly dying and unable to unload the data, Johnny is on the run. As customary, he doesn't know what he's carrying, but it quickly becomes apparent that if it gets into the right hands, it could change the world. Gen AS, right? Yeah, the black shape. Like half the people on the planet. So you don't get this shit from amp jobs, that's just a myth. So what does cause it? The world causes it. This causes it. This causes it. Information overload. All the electronics around you poisoning the airwaves. But we still have all this shit because we can't live without it. The crisis of modern society is the Black Shakes pandemic, which causes extensive neurological damage and violent seizures. The street doctors claim that signal pollution is the culprit. Human bodies are getting overloaded with digital waves, and they just can't take it. All-out riots and unrest break out between those most affected by this affliction and the elites who can live their lives in luxury and health. Johnny Mnemonic is a cyberpunk story through and through, as penned by one of the genre's best. It hits all the right beats, scouring cyberspace, touring us through the high-rise hotels of Beijing, and the shanty fortresses of Newark, reminiscent of the decrepit bridge city that debuted in virtual light. The movie was bold and ambitious, dwarfing any project Gibson or the director had done before. In fact, all the moving parts, production companies, studios, and busy work became overwhelming, according to reports. The movie gets lost in its wide variety of wacky ideas and flaunts its absurdity on its sleeve. This makes it difficult to take seriously at times, but there's still a lot to love in Johnny Mnemonic. It's old-school cyberpunk, beloved by many due to its earnest visualization of Gibson's world. Hit me. 